views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the second hour of the Mike Murphy Unfiltered Show. Uh, we just had a great hour with a special guest, but this next guest is just one of the smartest men I've ever met. Uh, I would even call him brilliant. And uh, he's had such a successful career, and he's still out there working, and he's so passionate about healing cancer. You know, he's lost so many loved ones in his immediate family to cancer. And he's created a, just a huge protocol of where people can actually heal. And he's just written a new book called The PH Miracle for Cancer. And the book prior to this, which had been out a long, long time, I read it like 10 years ago, The PH Miracle for Cancer, sold millions and millions of copies, has almost 600 Amazon reviews, four and a half stars, and it's a brilliant book. So I, I strongly urge you to check it out. He's an expert in microbiology and chemistry, a PhD in nutrition, um, but he gets results, and that's the brilliance. But, but here's what I can tell you about this man. And I read a quote once, you know, there's many ways to define success. You know, there's wealth and there's health and there's sports accomplishments and so on and so forth. But this person said the best way to measure success is what your children say about you when you're not around. And I had the privilege to spend an entire day with uh, one of Dr. Young's children, Andrew. And we, we spent almost a whole day together. He brought a bunch of kids over to my business in Oakland, and they spent the whole weekend cleaning up graffiti. Well, first of all, he just loves his father and respects his father like you can't believe. So, so I know this man is a really good man. And at times he's been a bit controversial in his career, but he's always had one passion and that's to help others and especially heal from cancer. Dr. Young, welcome to the show. Oh, well, thank you. Uh -huh. you're, you're making me cry. And I have, we haven't even got into this. You know? <laughs> I didn't even tell you about that story of <laughs> spending that day with your kid, but boy, what a big heart, just like you. And, you know, just, and, you know, I've spent enough time around you to see your, your sincerity and, and, and your passion for what you do. But more importantly, you're a brilliant researcher and, and your book is amazing. And, Doc, I, I believe that you – well, first of all, tell us what you think cancer is. Well, cancer, I'll tell you uh, from my perspective, okay, because we all have our experience right. and, and we go from that. My experience from my research and studying – and, and, and I'm not just a researcher, I'm also a clinician. So not only do we s say things, but we s do things at the same time. So we, and we measure our success, we quantify it. So we're not just speaking by somebody else's research, even though we're, we're, we're happy to see that. We're speaking from our own experience through quantifying using both conventional and traditional medical diagnostics. I mean, even when I was working with one client with prostate cancer, we to validate the cure for cancer, we had to do three separate biopsy, tissue biopsies, and take up to 20 different core samples. And let me interject, because, because he was working with you, but he's also working with this oncologist that wanted this concrete proof. Is that correct? Well, he wanted, he wouldn't, he wouldn't uh, participate, yes. He, uh, a great scientist, uh, professor... Uh, from uh, uh, and medical doctor, PhD from uh, University of Southern California. And I invited that. I, I invite anyone who uh, has questions concerning the efficacy of what uh, I'm doing is just to look at the quantitative analysis of what we did. So I did publish that. I published that. And in fact, it, the, the actual study is in what is called alkalizing uh, nutritional therapy and the prevention and reversal of any cancer condition. And his, his actual results, looking at his blood reports and looking at uh, not just live and dry, but also looking at quantifying it and the anatomy uh, and the shrinkage of tumors within a matter of weeks and that the total elimination of tumors by using a non-invasive approach which focuses on the environment. So your first question is, what is cancer? And I can definitely say it's not a noun. Cancer is not something. It's, it, it, it's actually an adjective de describing something. 
within the body. So it's an, an environmental condition. Now, something that's very, very important right now is what is called epigenetics. And mm-hmm. people hear that. What does that word mean? Epi means outside genetics. So epigenetics is the study of the environment outside the genetics. That's all it is. Mm-hmm. Very simple. And what they're fi- finding is genetics does not determine your destiny. Cancer does not run in families. What they're finding is lifestyle thinking, you know, I call it stinking thinking runs in families or healthy thinking. And and the great news about that, Doc, is that we're in control of our health. We're not subject to some random bullshit. We are in control. Yeah, your genetics only will be affected by the environment, which means you have complete control Mm -hmm. over your destiny and your life force. So I... I look at these conditions. Uh, in March, I'll be speaking about uh, the uh, in quantifying what I've done over. I've quantified what I've done as it relates to cancer. I'll be speaking about the cure for cancer. Mm-hmm. And when I talk about that, I, I've said in my book, The PH Miracle for Cancer, that the true cure for cancer is found in its prevention, not necessarily its treatment. But now I understand where this all begins. And it doesn't begin in the blood. It doesn't begin in the cell. It doesn't begin with the genetics. It begins in a new organ, which was just discovered by American scientists, because I've been studying it for 30 years, and published on it. This organ, if I was to ask anyone who's listening, what is the largest organ of the body? And they would probably answer, well, the liver? No. Uh, The bones? No. The blood, no. The skin, no. It's called the interstitium. The interstitium is the largest organ of the human body, and it contains a fluid called the interstitial fluids. It compartmentalizes every toxin in the body. And it's in between the blood and your skin, and it's the largest organ. It's kind of like a like if you're making a deposit to your bank account until you take a withdrawal. It's, it's where the blood It's where the organs make a deposit of their metabolic acids. Let let me, let me, and if if I remember correctly from your work, um, the blood is going to remain, create a perfect alkaline environment. I think it's like 7.65 pH level in the blood. 7.365. Okay. And if it gets too acidic, it pushes that into this organ that you're talking about, which causes inflation, which inflammation, which leads to disease. Is that accurate? Um, with a little, uh, uh, couple <laughs> with of a little of your expertise thrown in. <laughs> okay, so so the blood will always try to protect itself at the expense of of the interstitium or the interstitial fluids because that's really the buffer protection for the blood. So this is why doctors make statements where you can't change the pH of your body fluids. Hmm. Well, how would they know that? Are they measuring the chemistry? Are they measuring the pH of the interstitium, hmm. which makes up you know, 60% of the extracellular fluids. Is it the possible blood, to, is it possible to measure that? We measure. We're the only, we're the only group quantifying the chemistry. So you can have normal chemistry in the blood right? and you're in decompensated acidosis and sick. And it's the, it's the first line because I'll be speaking in Bali on sepsis and sepsis is probably the number one cause of death in hospitals in the right. world. Right. In the United States, 1,400 people die every day. Mm. And they try to deal with sepsis as a bacterial infection, and it's not. It's a, an acidic condition of the interstitium, and it's literally causing cells to break down, which gives birth to bacteria. So by trying to use antibiotics mm. to try to kill a bacteria just contrib- contributes more toxins to the interstitium and accelerates this, you can call it whatever, this sepsis or this flesh-eating bacteria, uh, all of this is a result of medical doctors who don't even understand the physiology, the anatomy, or the functionality of the largest organ of the human body. So, Doc, if, if antibiotics won't cure it, what, how, how do you cure that sepsis? You have to change an acidic environment the same way you change an acidic environment of a swimming pool. Hmm. If you start seeing it go rancid, you have to, you have to shock it. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so the shock, if, if, if you have a swimming pool, they shock it with alkalinity. Right. Okay. Well, 
you can't do this so extreme because you're already compensated. And the pH of the blood could be fine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So while you're dying, the, pH, <laughs> the, the, the blood of pH is fine. But the doctors don't know what to do. This is why this is why we're talking about this. It's a rare disease that nobody wants to talk about. Shh. Well, nobody because because there's some, they have some liability when people are dying of this disease that they got in their hospital. Well, they have to blame bacteria right. because of their ignorance. Right, right. They have to blame bacteria because they don't understand the chemistry. Hmm. For example, you can have bone loss. Your calcium levels can be normal in the blood, and yet you're in hypercalcemia in the interstitium wow. because the body is pulling calcium from your spinal column and your hips and your bones, and, you, wow. and you're literally becoming wow. wasting. You're losing inches because no one in the U.S. is addressing the chemistry or the pH of the interstitial fluids of the interstitium. How, how, how invasive is that to test that fluid? Well, everything that I, I try to do, I try to find non-invasive things that we do right. have to be non-invasive. So we hook up electrodes to various points, uh, major arteries and veins of the body, so we can measure these fluids, just like you would do if you put, you know, a pH strip like this. If you put a pH strip in your mouth to test it, which is non-invasive, uh, you would, by the way, that was alkaline. Uh, <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> you, would, you, would, you would also test the interstitial fluids. So some it can come so wait, from... Wait, when you did that, you were testing your interstitial fluids? No, or, no, no. I was, I was testing... I guess your saliva. Your saliva fluids. fluids. Okay. Gotcha. You want to test the interstitial fluids indirectly. Indirectly. Like how? How? You have to test the morning urine. Okay. Because the morning urine is the flood of waste that comes right. and is deposited into the kidneys and out through urination. So critical pH for sickness and disease is 5.5. If your pH is below 5.5, your urine pH, you're, you're in big trouble. Yeah. Okay? So that's a critical pH of the mouth if it's below 5.5. Right. Any dentist knows this critical mm -hmm. state. But when the blood drops, let's say, from 7.365 to 7.2, you're already in compensated, decompensated acidosis. You're already in trouble because the blood is the last organ to go. Everything else fails before the blood fails. Wow. So the interstitial fluids are, is, is, is the buffering system. Mm -hmm. It's the alkaline buffering system of the human body. Now, I want to make this very clear. Medical doctors today know very little, if nothing, about this organ, and they know nothing about how to, how to, how to quantify it and test it. Right. And they do not know the relationship between this large organ and its fluids and how it affects the cells. So now back to cancer. So what are the fluids that are bathing every cell in the human body in the breast or the prostate or the lung? It's interstitial fluid. Mm. So the pH of that interstitial fluid is affecting the genetics. Now we're talking about epigenetics, which then causes the mutation. The mutation doesn't come from the inside of the cell. The mutation comes from the outside of the cell in, mm. and it's pH chemistry sensitive. Wow. This is, the, this is the information that we needed to understand what causes cancer. This is the missing link between understanding what causes it. Because if you don't cause it, then you're just randomly, you know, doing things right. without knowing the effect of those things. Exactly. So you can test any supplement. You can test any food. You can test any uh, therapy, chemotherapy, any form of chemotherapy. And it, you can see the effects on the interstitial fluid, not in the blood. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so the theory of, of okay, well, chemotherapy is toxic to the cell. Mm -hmm. No, it's toxic to the fluids of the body. Mm -hmm. This is what causes systemic. And that's why the cancer returns most. most it never times. left. Okay. Yeah. Even better. Yeah. It, gotcha. It does, it, see, because cancer. <laughs> the tumor shrunk. Okay. Cause you killed the tumor and you killed a lot of other stuff, but the cancer cells are still there. Yeah. The cancer cell is an expression of its environment. The tumor is the solution to that. So what happens is the body in, encapsulates mm -hmm. the cells that have gone morbid 
because gotcha. the body hasn't broken them down. And, and the tumor is actually trying to protect you. The tumor is like the scab. Mm-hmm. And if you keep picking at your scab, right. you're not going to heal the tissue. Now, if you don't change the environment, nothing heals. Right, right. And this is what causes metastatic cancer. Mm -hmm. So you can remove the tumor, but the tumor is the solution. Mm -hmm. You have to change the environment in order to protect all the other organs. And if they find, let's say, breast cells in the liver or whatever, that's just the body trying to get rid of these toxic Mm -hmm. cells. It's not like cells cause cancer. Right. This is this is actually a false. Doc, when did you when did you have this breakthrough? This 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 current breakthrough. Well, I tell you, this breakthrough really happened when I met an incredible uh, doctor by the name of Dr. Galena Magalco. And the reason I mention her, her is because I was testing urine. I was testing saliva. Right. I was even having people go in and test blood. We were doing blood chemistries. But, we're, but I was talking about interstitium, but I had no right. way to measure it. Right. I've been talking about interstitium or oh, interstitial fluids. And doctors, by the way, know about interstitial fluids, but they don't right. pay attention because they don't know how to quantify it. Well, I don't think so many people ever consider it an organ. So that's one breakthrough right there. Well, I'll tell you how big the breakthrough is. We live on planet Earth and we look up at the moon. The discovery of the interstitial fluids of the interstitium or the organ of the interstitium is like finding a planet that's larger than the Earth, larger than the moon, in between each other. Wow. Wow. So it's like are you kidding me? You know, and, and this is how big the discovery is. Yeah. Now, this, this involves a lot of different people. So I don't, don't mishear me here. I'm not right. taking credit for the discovery. Right, right. right. Because my roots go back to Germany, Essen, Germany, where I studied the chemistry, the biochemistry. Well, but the reason I ask you, because I remember you talking to me about this interstitial fluid, but you never took it this far until this today is the first time Dr. I've heard you speak like this. Uh, came in, and we we have two incredible physicists who developed the technology to measure and quantify hundreds of different factors of the interstitium. So if things are normal in the blood, that doesn't mean you're healthy. Right, right. You and that's to, what we're always measuring. I'm going to get some blood work done. But that's only 10% of the body fluids. Right, right, right. So 10% of your body fluids is then being, which has to maintain its integrity, right, is right. then equated out to the entire body. Crazy. So here again, you, you, we, have, we have clients that come to us and say, well, we just don't know what's going on. Yeah. Well, the reason you don't know what you're go- is going on is because you're not measuring where the show is. The equivalent would be walking into a show that you said, oh, I want to see this show. It's a great movie. And you stay in it for 15 minutes. I said, I got it. I'm leaving. And you never stay, <laughs> you never stay for the ending. Right. So How did you like that movie? Oh, it was great. Yeah, yeah. But testing the blood is like going into a movie, getting some of the information, and then concluding what the whole movie's about. If, if Let's say I want to test, do this test. Can I go to my doctor in order? Or how do I go about it? No, if you went to your doctor and says, hey, can you test the interstitial fluids of the interstitium? He would probably say, huh? what's that? <laughs> yeah, right. So, so if somebody wants to come to you or your group, I don't, tell, me, tell me how we can come find this, do this test with you. Well, you know, you can come find by contacting us uh, through our website. Uh, there's, there's a couple that I'll give you. One is yeah. universalmedicalimaging.com. Uh, the other one is uh, drrobertyoung.com. Uh, it's probably the most accurate information on the Internet of all the things that people have to say about me, mm. both good, bad, and ugly. Okay. Okay, so um, – that's what you get when you're right. a public person. Exactly. You know, I'm and, just and, and and you're messing with people's billions of dollars. Well, I'm not trying to mess with anybody. Well, I know, else. I know, but 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 you're trying to heal people. But the, the the side effect is you. Some people might lose a lot of money. Well, you know, that's the that's their perception. That's yeah. their experience. I would yeah. disagree with that. Yeah. I would say that I'm helping them. You know, and encourage encouraging them. This is why I'm doing medical conferences now. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm trying to engage the the conventional medical doctors the professors and their students to look and open and broaden their minds to something that they know very little or nothing about Mm -hmm. and uh, these tests are available they're totally not evasive we don't even draw one drop of blood the only group in the united states that's actually testing 150 
50 parameters of the blood without drawing one drop of blood. Oh, wow. Because of the live blood cell analysis or the dry no, blood? No, because, no, because even that you have to prick a finger. There's no, right. prick, there's no blood drawing at all. So how do you do it? You do it by using electrodes. You, you place these electrodes on various uh, major uh, veins and arteries of the body and you pick up the information. You pick up their frequency. Every mineral has a vibrational frequency. Mm -hmm. Every cell has a vibrational frequency. So we measure, rather than doing a CBC, which stands for comprehensive blood test, which gives you white count, red count, hematocrit, hemoglobin, what have you, then we can measure that and see if someone's drinking, let's say, our super greens, right? Mm -hmm. If someone's drinking our super greens or they're taking our chlorophyll, mm -hmm. okay, we can say, hey, it's working. Your hemoglobin's going up. Your red count is going up to normal. So in a cancer con uh, patient, their red counts and their hemoglobin counts are generally low. Their white count goes up. We can measure all these parameters rather than taking blood from a vein, you know, putting it in a centrifuge, spinning it, you know, putting in coagulants or anticoagulants in order to, to get these base information. We get them immediately within 15 minutes. Hmm. So if someone comes into the emergency room, you don't have to guess at this stuff. You say, well, we need to do a blood draw to see if this person, you already know that they're in decompensated acidosis within, within minutes of them coming into the emergency, and you can save people's lives. And that's what this program is about, doing things smarter, doing things better, doing things that are more intelligent, educating, empowering people with this knowledge that there are Ways. You know, the, the ironical thing about this, the, the people at NASA do these tests for their astronauts because when they come out of space, they need to know the effect of what's going on in their bodies. Hmm. And they know about the interstitial fluids and the interstitium and they test for it. Let, let me ask you this. Let's say I'm diagnosed with prostate cancer and I come to you for consultation. What, what direction would you steer me? What would you suggest for me? Well, you know, in order, in order to, to really help somebody, you have to know where they're at at that particular moment. And so you need to be able to test not just the anatomy, which is being done with x-rays, which is being done with MRIs, with CAT scans. You need to test in a non-invasive way using uh, ultrasound, 3D ultrasound, 4D ultrasound. You need to test the anatomy non-invasively. Uh, you need to... Uh, test the functionality of all the organs and organ systems because you could have a cancer-free liver, but it's not functioning. Hmm. What's the point? Yeah, right. You know, it looks good under an x-ray, but right. it's not functioning. Right. So you, you, you have to test the functionality then of the organs. And then you have to test the physiology. Uh, Explain the, that. Explain that. The chemistry. So okay. you have to test all the chemistry of the body fluids. You have to know the pH. pH the excuse the doctors know because they're uneducated, period. Hmm. Help they me out. This is, this is one dilemma I'm having in my personal life right now is water, okay? So, you know, I know you're a proponent of high pH water. And, and so now, and then there's mineral water, and then there's distilled water. Well, what's the best freaking water to drink? Well, a lot of people don't understand the chemistry or the biochemistry of the stomach. So they have this false notion that you have to have acid in the stomach to digest food. Mm. That is totally false. The body doesn't digest food. There is no digestive system except for one instrument in the human body. Functionally, that's your teeth. If you don't chew it, if you don't liquefy it, when you swallow it, it comes out the same way it went in. Mm. And if you don't believe me, eat some peanuts, eat some corn, there have some spinach. There Just swallow a leaf of spinach. Uh -huh. When when it comes out, if it comes out, you'll see a spinach leaf come out completely intact. Yeah. So what is what is acid doing in the stomach? The answer to that is what is smoke doing in a fire? Mm -hmm. Okay. The yeah. bottom line is no one's going to light a fire for smoke. It's going to light a fire for heat. We all understand that. But you can reconstitute all of those elements back into the wood. So there, nothing is ever lost. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now we take food. We chew it, we swallow it. What is the stomach actually doing? We have the whole stomach that is covered with what are called cover cells. These cover cells draw fluid, uh, they draw salt, 
they draw, so water, they draw from the blood or other places. They draw salt and they draw carbon dioxide. And they make a, a very important element. It's called sodium bicarbonate. Mm-hmm. So what happens when you eat food, you immediately, the salivary glands, the stomach, the pylorus glands, even the pancreas, the gallbladder, all secrete alkaline substances on the food. Okay, in order for food to be transformed into stem cells, it has to be in an alkaline state of 8.4 in a liquid state. That takes place in the crypts of the small intestine. If you go to Google, you Google the gastric pits of the stomach, you'll see they're actually holding like this glass. Mm -hmm. It actually holds the hydrochloric acid as the sodium bicarbonate, which always rises to meet the food. Mm -hmm. That's why it's never there. Mm -hmm. What's left is the smoke and the smoke is the hydrochloric acid. So wrongfully the Germans in the fifties decided that you needed hydrochloric acid. And this is where all this nonsense, you got to drink vinegar, you got to take enzymes, Mm -hmm. you need probiotics. It's all nonsense. Really? And how do we know that? We know that because we quantify this information and we quantify it in its efficacy and what it does to our body fluids. It lowers pH. It causes poor digestion. Yes, it helps for a minute. Yeah, but, you know, a lot of things help, you know, temporarily, but they cause what are called side effects. The best thing you can drink then is alkaline water that has several features, multifunctional features, such as it's been ionized. What does ionization mean? It's been electrically charged with electrons. What are electrons? Electrons are the food of light. Uh, it's, it's, it's the reduced form of protons. Protons are light. Light is then transformed in our body into electrons. Electron is what the body runs on. The waste products are chemical waste. So we're literally light beings that produce chemical waste. Mm. Those chemical wastes are called acids. How do we neutralize those acids? Well, we can take antioxidant. What is an antioxidant? It's a, a electron donor. In other words, it donates electrons to neutralize what? Acids. Because what are acids? They're proton donors. So what neutralizes that? So when we take antioxidants, when we drink alkaline water, what are we doing? We're neutralizing the hydrochloric acid in the stomach. And everyone goes, oh, my heavens, heresy. You know, you're mm. burning my ears right now. <laughs> you know, <laughs> You're, gonna, you're saying the stomach does not digest food. I'm saying absolutely it digests nothing. I said, what's its purpose? Just like the interstitium, I discovered that the stomach is an organ of contribution, and its major contribution is to provide alkalinity for the food, alkalinity for the blood, alkalinity for the interstitial fluids. So when you go back to, let's say, a woman who's pregnant, and we're in the first trimester of her pregnancy, and we go, oh, my heavens. She's throwing up every day. Why? Because she either has to get those metabolic waste products in the development of this fetus and her own metabolic waste out through urination, perspiration, defecation, or respiration where it comes out, you know, one end or the other. Okay, so what happens if a woman and a doctor understood this and during the pregnancy – is that they would understand that acid reflux is nothing more than the body's need, not for more acid, but the body's deficiency in alkalinity. So you drink alkaline water, neutralize the acid, or you take a product called four salts, which is one of my most popular products. You neutralize the acid of the stomach. No more acid reflux. No more morning sickness. No more, if you take it to the extreme where you're in a degenerative condition, no more sepsis. There, sepsis is an unknown etiology. No one knows what causes sepsis. That's my lecture in Bali, wow. is, what is the what is the cause and what is the cure for sepsis? It's never been recorded. It's never been stated. You can't Google it. You can't find it. It's just generally talked about it, but it's, a, it's called idiopathic. It's unknown, and it's the number one cause of death in the world. Hmm. Sepsis. Wow. And it happens, it happens in people's homes and it happens in the hospitals. And we had, we had a, a dear friend that we just lost in the hospital because of that. Wow. And, and it's like, you know, wait, 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 we can, we can, we can, we can, we can cure can that. Yeah. Wait, so we're, we're going to go to break in just a second. And you mentioned sodium bicarbonate, which, which I believe is effective in healing cancer, but we'll get into that. And um, you have a unique IV, but I want to ask you real quick before we go, magnesium bicarbonate, what, what, what is that? And is it good for us? 
Well, mag- magnesium bicarbonate would be in a, in a liquid form. Magnesium, probably the best form of magnesium. Would, there's two forms that I suggest, either magnesium chloride or magnesium threonate. Magnesium threonate, the molecule is smaller, so it bypasses the blood barrier. So it helps to neutralize the acids from uh, cranial uh, brain function, brain cells that produce acids that are using electrons at a very high rate. The more you think, the more acid you produce. Gotcha. And, uh, you know, you need a, a magnesium. But magnesium is is known, I think, throughout the, the world, both in conventional and traditional me- medicine, as an anti-inflammatory. What is an anti-inflammatory? It's against acid. That's all it is. Mm-hmm. And so what is acid? Acid is a waste product either from cellular function. It can be either cellular metabolism. It can be from diet. It can be from toxins in, the, in, in our atmosphere. Uh, carbon monoxide is an acid. Uh, we all know if we hold our breath, the carbon dioxide would build up and kill us within about three to four minutes. Mm-hmm. So we, know, we should know intuitively how, how our body needs these orifices to remove. If any one of these orifices are clogged up, would be the same thing would happen if you take a sock and put it in the exhaust pipe of a car. Mm-hmm. The engine stops. So when you hold your breath, your body, your heart stops. Everything stops. If body cannot get rid of its waste products, guess where it goes? You know the answer. Yeah. Where does the acid go? In that interstitial fluid. That's right. <laughs> okay, it stays there until when? You start exercising and you sweat it out. I got gotcha. you. Or you start drinking and you pee it out. Right, right. Or And you start breathing, you eliminate it. You have to eliminate it through the orifice, orifices of the body. If you don't eliminate it, eventually the body will start retaining fat. Yep. And the body uses fat to, to, to protect the organs that sustain life. So all of that acid in the interstitium as it builds up and builds up, it goes into the fatty tissues and some spills back into the blood and that's what causes compensated and decompensated acidosis of the blood. But that's the last straw. I mean, it's yeah. like, okay, yeah. why are we waiting so late? Right, exactly. We can nip quick, this. Quick, quick, quick answer. Mineral yeah. water, good or bad? What's that? Mineral water, good or bad? Uh, mineral water is, is a general classification. It depends on, you know, what type of mineral. Clean, clean, clean mineral water, that, you know. Uh, generally, yes. It's okay. okay. Uh, distilled water. Distilled water is electrically new, neutral. It doesn't, it doesn't donate electrons. It does, it, it, there's no mineral there. It's it, yeah. they've been distilled out. So it's, it's electrically neutral. I remember yeah. Paul Bragg would always advocate using distilled water during a fast. I don't know why. Well, but. I recommend using distilled in all of my formulas, all my colloidal formulas. Uh-huh. I, use, I distill it, and then I distill it again. Okay. And then what I do is I infuse the mineral that I want to, to expose to the body fluids. Okay. Well, for, I, for, for normal drinking, though, just a high pH water, you know, above 7. High pH water, ideally you should be drinking a, a pH water that has, is multifunctional. It's, number one, it's been ionized, so it has, carries electrical charge of about negative 250 millivolt volts. It's pH sensitive at a pH of nine to 9.5. It's light sensitive. Uh, it's been filtered out. So a lot of the toxins in there have been taken out before a lot of this other pro- processes. But you want a good filtered, ionized, alkalized, photon light, and even a little bit of ozone in there, mm-hmm. which generated through a hydrogen generator. Right. So that's why... And I was really frustrated about it. I know you don't know this, right? Uh-huh. But I created this, this <laughs> multifunctional bottle. Okay, yeah. this is a smart bottle. Uh-huh. Okay, this smart bottle actually talks to you. It has a little button here, right here. Uh-huh. And right. you push it, and it tells you what it's going to do. So it's starting out doing ORP, which is it's starting to ionize the bottle. Wow. But in this are titanium plates. Okay, so it uh-huh. ionizes, it alkalizes. It has two different filter cores in it. And it has a hydrogen generator, so it produces ozone and H2. Wow. And it's nice for me because I can take my water ionizer with me in yeah. my hand. Brilliant. And when I leave my home, this is all I take with me now. So if I, I want to buy one, where do I go? Well, you have to go to innerlightblue.com. Okay. Or you can go to uh, phmiraclestore.com or phmiracleproducts.com. Okay, we're going to take a quick break, ladies and gentlemen. And I want to apologize. I want to show you, so before you break, go, please look go. really carefully. Yeah. Can you see the ozone and hydrogen, uh, negative hydrogen being? Oh, uh, from the bottom? Yes. Unbelievable. Yeah, you see it, see wow. the bubbles? Super. Yeah. Yes. yeah. So Incredible. It, it's, the only, it's the only smart bottle on the market. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be right back. And I want to apologize before we go. When I introduced Dr. Young, I, I called him brilliant. And he's blowing that word away because he's, he's a lot smarter than the last time I talked to him. So, uh, so excited to have you here. Folks, we're going to be right back. Stay tuned for this vital information. Ladies and gentlemen, our guests, our special guest today is Dr. Robert Young, who wrote this amazing book called The PH Miracle. I don't know, it's been out a long time. Millions of copies have sold. And his newest book, The PH Miracle for Cancer. And, you know, you can find his work at, at YouTube and hear his lectures and how brilliant he is. You can go to drrobertyoung.com, see what he's up to, his products. And I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, this man is brilliant when it comes to nutrition and understanding how the human body works, how disease is created in it, and how to eliminate the disease. And isn't that what we all want? Robert, um, I know that in, in, your, tr in your treatment or uh, working with people, you do IVs, and, and I'm looking at one here with ANI infusion. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, well, that's uh, – that, I talk about uh, intravenous um, – uh, infusions, of course, uh, as a disclaimer, you know, I am not a medical doctor, so I right. don't want to get anybody confused about that. Yes, sir. Uh, number two, my, my doctorates are in nutrition and in biochemistry, but, um, but I, I highly educated or maybe in, in the field of microbiology. When we, when we talk about infusions, number one, those have to be done by a licensed medical doctor. Number two, there's a lot of research out there uh, that where people are using IVs, but I'll tell you something here, Mike. Uh, I found that the best way to infuse things is either through the pores of the skin because there's 37,500 pores per square inch of the skin. Or anally. Anally or orally. And, and using the, the, the orifices of the body rather than penetrating the skin mm. and the very sensitive blood vessel – uh, to inject this, I find that it's, it's shocking wow. uh, to the blood. So, you know, if a medical doctor is, is doing IVs, those are things that they can do. And, you know, as far as not shocking the body, the best way to go is to gently infuse that into the rectum. Or another thing is using suppositories mm -hmm. where you can actually take uh, the actual material, let's say you want to use sodium bicarbonate or magnesium. Mm -hmm. You can put that into a tray, like you make your ice cubes mm -hmm. and then you can pour in uh, coconut oil mm -hmm. and then you can refrigerate that, which will solidify the coconut and the material. And then you can infuse that in on your own. So you can create your own uh, essence. And once you put that suppository in those contents will then be taken up through the hemorrhoidal vein directly into the blood and then out to the interstitial fluids, which then bathe the cells. It is, it is the interstitial fluids that bathe the cells. So what is the best way to do that? And so uh, I've had experience doing things a lot of different ways, and I find that this tends to be the most uh, complementary to supporting the blood, uh, and particularly with sick people who – or maybe have very right. weak blood vessels. But using sodium bicarbonate, a good study that you can check out that was done in 2001 by the University of Arizona found that using sodium bicarbonate in, uh, in cancer, where you have a primary site like the breast or the prostate, uh, would actually prevent metas metastasis. And I think yeah. that was a, a very interesting study that was done with sodium bicarbonate. There's, there, there's not a lot of studies that have been done with this because it's a very, uh, it, it's non-patentable. You, you know, you can't, uh, uh, I mean, you can't control that substance. It's very inexpensive, uh, but it's highly effective. Uh, people don't realize that, that our bodies are salty solutions unless they mm -hmm. start thinking about it. Go away, your tears are salty. Your sweat is salty. You know, think about it for a minute. What right. if you put, uh, ocean fish uh, on a salt-free diet, what would happen to the fish? They would all yeah, die. Right. It, it, well, the concentration of sodium in our body fluids is identical to the ocean. Wow. And so it's very, very important that you, uh, in, in cases of emergency, because in emergency rooms, 
if someone's in, in compensated or even decompens- uh, decompensated acidosis in a very stressful thing, they will administer mm-hmm. a sodium bicarbonate or an alkalizing IV to bring the people out of, of, of this uh, uh, shock and bring their blood. And, 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 and here's where there's a problem that arises in my mind because we're taught, told that salt is bad for us when in reality we need this salt in our body. So speak well, about that. Yeah, it's, you need colloidal salts. You need something that, uh, that the cells can use. You need, you need that saline solution. Right. And I'll tell you why, because a lot of people don't know why. Since our bodies do not run on fat, proteins, and carbohydrates, that our cells and the anatomical elements that make up the cells run on electrons. Mm-hmm. The salt is necessary in order to conduct the transfer of those electrons to each of the individual cell. So when you're low sodium, you're tired, you're fatigued. And people say, well, why am I so tired? Am I say, well, you're on a no side diet. If, if you're a type one diabetic or even type two, and you start going into what is called hypoglycemia. Well, hypoglycemia is being coined as, means low, hypo, low, sugar. But in reality, what's it is hypo, uh, sodium, hyposodium. So you're actually low salt. So if you take a concentration of sodium, you come right out of that hypoglycemia because sugar, a lot of people don't know this, is a waste product of metabolism. That's why we have sugar in our body. When, when, and think about it like this. Do bananas get more sweet as they ripen? Well, they spoil. Well, they do get sweeter, but they spoil. Yeah. Well, that's it's, it's, it's the sugar... Yeah, I got you. So the sugar is increased by the cellular breakdown. Gotcha. So when cells are breaking down or if the body's using energy, sugars go up. So it's not like, oh, wow, you know, you don't need any sugar. Yes, you don't need any sugar at all because the body doesn't run on it. But, but you, everything converts the sugar to create the energy. Is that correct? No, sh- sugar's not involved in it at all. Okay. Well, tell, okay. Me, tell me why cancer cells allegedly love sugar. Well, cancer cells don't necessarily love sugar. Uh, cancer cells are cancerous because it's not a, there's no such thing as a cancer cell. Okay. Cancer cell, it's an adjective. They're cancerous. They're breaking down and fermenting because of sugar. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. You know, it's not like they're using sugar. What they're using is they're using your electrical energy. Gotcha. What I, let me, wow. let me simplify it. Okay. I'd like to state there that you are electrical beings that mm-hmm. run on electrons, but when you use electricity, you produce a waste product. It's a chemical waste product, and it can be lactic acid. So, so when the muscles are flexing and contracting when you're, when you're walking, they're using electrons. And mm-hmm. when that electron is used, a chemical waste, what is the chemical waste? Lactic acid. So I can tell you, you name the condition, I can tell you the acid that causes that. So if you say gout, you say what? Uric acid. If you say cancer, what's the acid? Lactic acid. What is lactic acid? Elastic, lactic acid is the chemical waste product of metabolism. Mm-hmm. It's the number one waste product. Well, what about all the bacteria or the yeast or the mold? What's that doing there? That's the same thing that happens within our refrigerator. As matter begins to disintegrate, yeah. bacteria is born out of that. Right. Yeast is born out of that. So it's not like mold is causing it the problem or yeast or bacteria. It's actually the increase of waste products that are not being properly eliminated through the four channels of elimination. What are they? Women have five. Men have four. Urination, defecation, perspiration, and respiration. For women, menstruation. You know, that's believe it or not, keeps them healthy. It purifies the blood. It removes waste products. Through so, that. so we get in trouble when we can't eliminate this toxicity. Yeah, that's where the saying comes, you're full of shit. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Because so t- t- tell me about you the... Li- you, wouldn't have, you wouldn't have cancer... If you had this toxicity out of your body. ...in an acidic environment. Right. Now, you can, you can flip the word. You can say, oh, well, acid, acid, acid. You know, right, right. and I say, okay, change it. Toxin, toxin, toxin. Yeah. Okay. Me, well, I don't want to say that inflammation, inflammation, but inflammation is not a disease. It's a symptom of what? Toxicity. What's right. the toxicity? Metabolic, dietary, environmental. So the air we breathe, the thoughts we think, 
So all of a sudden, we're thinking, we're thinking, we're thinking. The body's using electrons, 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 and acid is being produced, 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 and we get sick from it. So there's no, you, you can't stop the toxicity. You just got to keep the immune system and the sewage system clean and flowing. Well, I'll tell you what the immune system does. It provides no immunity at all. So the immune system is garbage collection service. So you've got two thirds of your white count, which are neutral fields. What are those? They're garbage collectors. They go up and pick up mm-hmm. cell fragments from the destruction we cause because we don't take care of the environment. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. From an artist. An artist, when you're looking at a picture, looks at what is called negative space. Mm-hmm. So we, for a non-artist, we say, well, there's a tree. Oh, that's a person. No. Well, look at the space around. The environment is what gives meaning to that particular matter. Gotcha. So when we're looking in medicine, why can't we do that? Why can't we look at the negative space? Why can't we consider environmental medicine and take it more seriously? Now, I worked with the, the medical director at Stanford University. Why? Because she needed help with her cancer. Mm. Well, why would she come to me? I mean, she's at one of the top universities. Where, where, I mean, the person that's published in this article, you know, he's a billionaire. He can, he can have any client. Why is he coming to me? He's coming to me and our team because it's not just about me. All right. 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 He's coming to us because we are environmentalists. Mm-hmm. We're recognizing that pollution within is what's causing these conditions. We take, we take anything from autism to cancer to, you know, HIV. In fact, I wrote a, a paper, which is published, on polio, the possible cause of polio, and why there's post-polio, and also answers the question about Zika and all these other viruses, which is based upon faulty science. Mm -hmm. But when you understand polio is a condition of a toxin, what causes polio? Well, it's evident based upon 100 years of research and testing that it's caused by glycophosphates. DDT, it's it's systemic poisoning. Now, the people down in Brazil know that Zika is not a virus. They know that it's a toxin within the food they're eating. Mm -hmm. They're pesticides. Mm-hmm. We also, from a case that just happened with a man that won a very handsome award for Roundup, which is a pesticide that caused his cancer. Right. And the jury found in their favor, in his favor. Well, we're talking about pesticides, and this is why organic food is so important. That's why we need clean food, because we can't measure the amount of toxicity of that food. We just right. take it for granted that it's healthy. We may have to become farmers ourselves, grow our right. own food. Right. But so so the, you bring up an interesting thing. With this Monsanto decision, are you optimistic that the tide can turn, that we can do away with these GMOs and this glyphosate and all this other bullshit? Or are we at the mercy of the moneymakers? Well, you just have to walk in the store. The public will determine that. Right. And so what you're seeing on the shelves at, here in California, at Lucky's, at Rouse, at Vaughn's, Walk into Costco. I mean, they're they're literally throwing out all of the GMO. They're throwing out all of the pesticide. And they're saying, we're going to now give the public what they deserve. You know, clean food that's pesticide, chemical free. So So guys like you educating people, I mean, it's starting to have a payoff right now. It is, but you know we pay a high price by doing this. Right. But you know we love life. We we want to help people. We love people, and we want to help people. And um, you know we trade our knowledge, uh, uh, not for money, but we, we we trade our knowledge to empower people so they can care for themselves. Right. Right. Uh, let me the- let me ask you this because I'm pretty sure you're vegan, vegetarian. So let's talk about that diet versus a meat-based diet. And I know you don't like chicken. So, because that's really the bottom line, you know, Hippocrates, you know, let your food be your medicine, medicine be your food. So speak to that if you will. Yeah. Well, I think a lot of the top athletes in the world are moving this direction. Tom Brady's moved this direction. Uh, Serena Williams has moved this direction. Uh, I've been, I, I mean, I came out of the world of sports as a professional athlete who loves biology, who loves helping people, it was a natural for me to continue in this way. Mm. And so, you know, I started out as a vegetarian 
1974. Okay. And I was weird then. Okay. So I went from a vegetarian to a vegan. Now I've gone, I've literally lost my mind you know, (laughs) as a vegan. Uh, And now, Oh, that's the guy that drinks grass. I don't smoke the grass. I drink oh, the grass eater. Yeah, he goes grass up there and he drinks it. And he said, so, I, you know, my experience of moving this way, but I think, it, 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 you know, with all the stresses of the world around us, which we have very little control of, mm. I mean, we talk about them, but we really right. have some uh, control of our internal environment. Yeah, we need to protect ourselves and, and take responsibility for our own well-being. And the best way... You can do this. And a perfect example is Tom Brady at the age of 41, having won six Super Bowls. Right. He's been on this program now for the last three to four years. Right. He gets a lot of criticism. Oh, he's on that crazy alkaline right, diet, right, right, right. which happens to be wonderful because it's one of the top five, if not the top two or three diets, if not number one, diet that's in the world. It's called the pH miracle diet. It's a, mm-hmm. it's an alkaline lifestyle and diet. And it's not really a diet. It's a way of lifestyle. living. It's a way of, uh, it's, it, it's a, it's a way of thinking. Yeah. And, and the more you learn, you are empowering yourself for a better quality of life. Yeah. Uh, and really that's my mission is to change lives and to save lives by empowering people with the knowledge they need since yeah. they didn't get a manual when they were born. They didn't, didn't come with a manual of how to take care of their bodies. And I've surrounded myself with some of the most incredible people, um, you know, that really are embracing this and, and sharing it with others. How how old are you? How old are you now, Robert? I am. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Well, it depends on how you look at it. I'll be 67 on March 6th. Yeah. So ladies and gentlemen, I mean, you know, there's a man that walks his talk. I mean, he doesn't look, he looks 50, not 60. 67. I watched him drink avocado milkshakes in the morning for breakfast. I mean, he really embraces this. So, so, you know, a plant-based diet and with good oils like avocados and, and fish oil is pure, uh, yeah, is the best I, way. Yeah, avocados is probably one of the most important foods you can begin to eat besides, you know, uh, starting to blend and puree and juice your food. Uh, uh, because once you get it pre-digested, you start putting that pre-digested whole food in your body, it can really then start building your blood because the blood is the major organ that produces all other body cells, a red blood cell. Muhammad said, don't you understand that, uh, that you were made from one drop of blood? Mm. Uh, Moses said for out of the life of the blood, life and death is, is, is the blood. And so the blood is a critical element. So all things are protected for that particular element. It's the last thing to go. And you can protect that by not focusing on the liver, the lungs, the heart, the brain, the breast, but focusing on the fluids that surround the cells of the lung, the breast. And so you just have to flip a little bit and say, what are you doing for your internal environment? Which happens, most people know. I mean, what is what does the internal environment consist of? I mean, how much water are you based upon solid matter? Uh, 50, 60, 65, when you're born, you're 90% water. That's why you're all nice and supple. Right. But we, we lose that. We become dehydrated and we start shriveling up like a prune. And when we can hydrate our body with the proper water, and I have to show you this little experiment because I know you have to go here. But if you take just a little bit of photon light wow. right here, you see yeah. that? Uh-huh. This is concentrated liquid light wow and liquid light it's it's a constant it's 101 concentration how, 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 how do they produce that the way we produce it is we 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 dehy- we juice juice the the, the fruit yeah or the vegetable uh-huh. okay yeah. and then we continue to extract the water while we're doing more juicing and we created 101 concentration of pure chlorophyll so okay. when you put it in the water you can then see without even moving this, mm-hmm. how this life force mm. literally overtakes and combines and becomes a colloidal solution wow. of pure light. Wow. Pure light. And this is how you get light into the body because we are light beings. Yep. Yep. Vegetables hold light in the center molecule called chlorophyll. Yep. This is a concentration of chlorophyll. 
You just need to use a little bit. And yes, everything turns green when you drink it. So how, how, how did we get into this eating dead animals, meat and flesh of dead animals? How did oh, that yeah. happen? Uh, the Babylonians introduced that. <laughs> so that's been going on for a lot, a lot, a lot of years. Oh, those Babylonians. I'm not, <laughs> you, if, you, if you know the descendants of Babylon, I'm not going to say the country. Right, 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 right. But they introduced a lot of things, murder, mm-hmm. uh, eating the flesh of animals. I, I mean, and, and they were warned. Uh, usury. <laughs> what? <laughs> Interest on money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't, you don't build blood with somebody else's blood. Yeah, especially but, dead blood. Yeah, especially dead blood or dead flesh. Flesh, because flesh or meat is just a conglomeration. You have no idea what that animal's been eating. Exactly. You don't know the stress levels. I mean, I, I started crying when I saw this poor pig who had injuries, had been beaten, you know, was in a trailer ready to be taken to slaughter, and the poor pig was crying. It made me cry. Yeah. You know, yeah. and, and when we pick up that energy, because at the end of the day, it's light and energy is what's really going on here, and then that comes into our body. Absolutely. You know, uh, one of the most dangerous things you can do is take on the identity of other living beings, you know, unless there's two reasons. I can think of only two reasons for doing something like that. And that would be if you're starving to death, which I don't know of any of us here, at least in the U.S., are starving to death, or you're literally freezing to death. Mm-hmm. And, and, and then you have to think twice about it then because – because you take on the personality, you take on the anatomical elements, which which you literally take on the thoughts and the feelings of whatever you're eating. Yeah. And so, you know, you want to take in more light, get more sunlight, you know, get out, you know, and bathe in it. Your eyes are receptacle for light. Your pineal gland is a light meter, which transforms that into electrical energy. That's why you feel better when you're bathing in light. If you want to drink light, you can drink it in the form of chlorophyll, eat higher concentrations of, of dense uh, chlorophyll foods like spinach and broccoli and uh, grass. And, 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 and if we can't do that, we can just buy your greens and put it into some good pH water. And there yeah. we go. I made it, I made it so simple. Yeah. I mean, I, in 1983, when I created the first powdered greens in the world, super greens sold, sold hundreds of millions of bottles of this stuff. Yeah. Uh, I knew that I was onto something. And, and you know, when I first started all this, I just wanted to pay the light bill, you know. Yeah, and, right, right. Yeah. You know, well, I, I wasn't thinking of fortune. I was just thinking about, you know, how can I help myself? How can I help my family? Well, yeah, you had a lot of me- members of your family that died from cancer, especially the ones that went conventional treatment. Yeah, yeah, I, I did. Yeah, and and it's uh, it's sad uh, when they make those choices, but it's their life, right? It's their exactly. Body. Exactly. I, I truly believe in in free choice and. If someone chooses a certain way, I respect that. I may not agree with it, but I respect it. Exactly. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we got to go. Unfortunately, I could talk to Dr. Robert Young all day long. I have a million questions I haven't asked. So uh, during the break, we talked. I'm going to go visit him in uh, his farm in San Diego. And uh, hopefully we can do another one of these and bring you some more information on how to detox the body and all the things he does from infrared saunas to colonics to get this toxicity out of our system. But the best way, ladies and gentlemen, is a high pH water, fresh vegetables, fresh fruits, exercise, breathe, quiet the mind. Mm -hmm. But most importantly, you own your health. You're responsible. I hate to say that because if you're suffering from cancer right now, that's a brutal thing to say to somebody. But in some level, you are responsible. But the Mm -hmm. good news is you can heal yourself. Just that's right. Do the legwork, do the research, pay attention to what's going on, and you can do it. Yeah, provide, Robert, the, pro- provide the proper environment, you, you, the body will respond in a positive way. Doc, thank you so much for this. All the best to you and your family. Thank you very much. Right. You okay, later. ladies and gentlemen, that's another edition of Mike Murphy Unfiltered. Remember, we are sponsored by the Creation Frequency. Go to Amazon, read the reviews, go to the Mike Murphy Unfiltered, click the link, take the course. I promise you, your life can only get better. Until next week, go out and make this the best day of your life. You've been listening to Mike Murphy, unfiltered, unfettered, unflinching, unafraid, on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Thanks for tuning in, and don't miss the next unfiltered show next Thursday from noon to 2 Pacific time on TransformationTalkRadio.com. 
as Mike Murphy and a cast of powerful guests strip away the veil of limitation using the groundbreaking practices of the creation frequency. Tune in to unleash the power of your mind. Open the immense energy of the heart to manifest an awesome life filled with true health, wealth, confidence, gratitude, and joy. Unfiltered truth, unfiltered frequency, unfiltered possibilities on Mike Murphy Unfiltered Radio. For more information on Mike and his work, visit MikeMurphyUnfiltered.com.